all right, going to go through some scriptures showing that the Calvinist error and heresy of limited atonement is actually refuted, thoroughly refuted by the prophet Isaiah in the prophecies about Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to show three prophecies in Isaiah about Jesus Christ, and all three of them prove that the atonement is not limited and therefore refute Calvinism. So let's get right into it. First, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22 says, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. All the ends of the earth, you know, not just of the elect, as the Calvinists would claim. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Isaiah 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Again, all, not just of the elect. Uh, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. Isaiah 49, verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Okay? God wants everyone to be saved. And the fulfillment of these prophecies further show that the atonement is not limited and further refute Calvinism. Acts chapter 13, verse 47. Acts 13, verse 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And also Luke chapter 24, verses 46 to 47. Luke 24, verses 46 to 47. It says... And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it, be it, beho it behoved... Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission, remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Plain and simple. Uh, so the fulfillment of those prophecies in Isaiah further refute this heresy of limited atonement. They're preaching to everybody. And by the way, too, if there's no free will in the context of salvation, if God just chooses who gets saved, what's the point of even preaching the gospel then? There's no point. The fact that they're having to go out and preach the gospel further refutes Calvinism. Because it proves that you have to make a choice to believe on Christ and trust the gospel. Trust in Jesus Christ's uh, sacrifice to pay for your sins. You know, if, if there's no free will, then what's the point of even preaching? God will just do it himself. Okay? And some more scriptures that further refute this heresy of limited atonement is for, and also prove that the atonement, that the, the, the basically salvation is available to all, is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, 1 John chapter 4, verse 14 to 15, John chapter 3, verse 14 to 17, John chapter 1, verse 7 to 9, Romans chapter 5, verse 18, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, Romans chapter 10, verse 11 to 13, and many others too, by the way. But all those scriptures prove that Christ did die for everybody and the atonement is not limited. But also these verses show that you have to believe on Christ in order for that to have effect. Because Calvinists will accuse you of being universalist if you say that Christ died for everyone. And, the, and they use this argument that, well, if Christ died for everyone, then nobody would go to hell. But you read those verses, yes, the atonement is available to all. When I say limited atonement is a heresy, I'm saying that salvation is available to all, but you got to make the choice to believe on Christ. See, when they deny free will, it's a whole gateway to a bunch of other heresies when you get down to it. So there you go with some prophecies in Isaiah that refute this heresy of limited atonement propagated by Calvinism. So don't be deceived by Calvinism and all of its errors. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.